take a look at what it's like to grow a rose. When a uh, rose is growing in nature, the petals grow in a spiral pattern. And one of the reasons for this is a beautiful metaphor for leadership because, um, you know, the leader needs to be uh, nurturing and caring of the people that it takes care of. So the person at the top can't hog up everything and hog up all the resources and hog up all the things they want and forget about the people. Well, in the same way, a rose petal needs to spread out the sunshine. So if only one petal on top received all the sunshine and all the other ones were behind it, uh, they wouldn't get the energy they needed and they would die. So when a uh, rose makes a spiral, what it's doing is it's trying to create balance. It's trying to create strength. Uh, we see spirals in all sorts of things in nature. It gives it strength. It gives it balance. Um, and it gives, you, it gives it the resilience it needs to grow and adapt as it's going in nature. But um, as we know, the Fibonacci spiral is a number from the what they call the Fibonacci uh, pattern. And it's adding 0 and 1, and then you keep adding the 2 before it. 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, and you continue in a pattern that when you graph it using squares, it'll make a perfect spiral. And we're going to try to create a rose and see how the spiraling of the rose will look. So I'm going to begin by drawing a little shape. So what we could do, we could actually draw a um, triangle. A triangle wouldn't be too difficult to begin to replicate. So let's make a polygon or a specifically a little triangle. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to consider this my rose petal. And I'm going to click on the first letter C. And oops, before I do that, go back. I need to click Move Tool. And click on the C so that I can click the three dots and settings. Now what you want to do is you want to unclick Show Object and unclick Show Label. Then close it. And We'll do the same thing to B and to A. Close object, close uncheck label, and the third time. So if we don't do that, what we're going to get is a whole bunch of different numbers. And when the settings are up, we can see a color. So I'm going to change the color to pink, and maybe every five or six I'm going to change the color just so we can more easily see uh, the progression and I can see where I left off because sometimes as you're rotating a lot you you lose track of where the last shape was now uh, again what we did to make that triangle is we went under polygons and you click the polygon shape tool and you could have made a triangle you could make it even uh, more complicated than that if you really wanted to you could you know you could make a more of a leafy pattern but then you would need to get rid of those points the way we just showed. So I'm going to use a triangle and if you want to make it the easiest you can you could use a triangle too. So we're going to rotate that and just like every flower, rose, and fruit you start with the center. You need some center point and circle to rotate and begin to grow around. So I'm going to click the rotating button and it's under transform and it's going to say rotate around a point Oops, I actually, let's change the color. Oops, go to move. So you get the little arrow and you can change the color. Let me change it. I thought I did, but it didn't stick. So that'll be my rose petal. I'm going to go back to rotating around a point. So I'm going to click the rose and then we need a center point, the center of our flower. I'm going to change the degrees to 137.5 as I mentioned because that's the degrees, the number of degrees that a rose's petals will actually grow in. Now I will, if you wanted to, you could go clockwise to the right or counter to the left. I'm going to leave it counterclockwise so, because that's what it comes up as. I don't want to keep having to make an extra click to counter or to clockwise. But in nature, um, or in math, things we use is, is counterclockwise. We use something called a unit circle in higher math and we begin to use eh, some of it, the concepts of it in geometry, but they would travel to the left. So in math and geometry and pre-cal and calculus, when you're using a unit circle, you're going counterclockwise. So my old math teacher, Ms. Endo, uh, shout out to her, said that if math, a math person had made a, the first clock, they would have made clockwise spinning the other way to the left because that would be more natural to math. But anyway, 
there's my 137 degree rotation. I'm going to click the new one and click the center point again. So if we do this as an assignment, I'm going to recommend we do a different degree so it's easier to keep track of because you're going to see eventually it gets a little messy as it begins to spiral. So I'm going to click the new one and then click again and then I'll probably speed things up so you don't have to keep watching me do this. But you'll notice I'm going to click the shape, click the center. Every couple of maybe five or six, what I'm going to do is change the color so that it's easier for us to see where we left off. So I'm going to undo that and redo it. So if you forgot which one was the last one, you could undo and redo it. Sometimes you'll see it. So I'm going to do that. And when I click on it, I'm going to change the colors. So just to let you know, I might be changing the colors every, every couple of rotations because I want to keep track of which one was the last one. So I'm going to speed up the camera. Here we go. Let me just readjust the positioning. Oops, and let me rechange that color. So let's talk about um, why it takes so long to do this. When we look at the Fibonacci number, we have um, a pattern, right? And we, if you look up the Fibonacci pattern or you're familiar with it, what you have is a number pattern where you add the one that's previous to the one that, well, you add the two that are previous to the term you're looking for. So I had mentioned at the beginning, it starts off with a zero and a one. And after a zero and a one, I don't know why my pen isn't working correctly. Zero, one, one. You add those two, you get two. Two plus one is three. And then three plus two is five. Eight, 13, 34, 50, no, I'm sorry, it's 21. 8 plus 13 is 21, then 34, then 55, then 89, or, and then 144. So the number of petals I need to draw are the number of petals that are on this pattern. So it's more than likely most roses will have 55, 89, 144. I believe it's 144. So if I wanted to continue doing this, it's going to take a while to get to all 144. But I think we've got the point here. Um, as you can see, well, let's analyze a few of the things about the rows that we made. One thing that we might notice is as we got to more and more of the petals, the inside starts to make a better round circle. So as we layer them around, it makes a perfect circle or begins to make a perfect circle or the outline of one. Uh, the other thing is you could see like a little star pattern or star design. So one cool thing that GeoGebra allows you to do is it allows you to grab the center and begin to rotate it. So I can actually see the spirals as maybe the flower would open or maybe the flower would close. So if I put everything in the center point, see we have all of them lined up, which is not how it works, right? We have a spiral. 
and we were something like this. So as the flower opens, you see the beautiful petals. So it's also a cool pattern and a cool design. It's amazing. Uh, so nature does create the Fibonacci spa uh, spiral or pattern for a reason. They, they want to give an amount of sun to each of the petals. Now you could see where I'm not completed because as these two are so close up on top, right? they should all be evenly spaced. So I'm probably between the 55 and 144 number and I, I just didn't want to keep going because it, as you saw with the colors, it helps to keep track but without colors, oh boy. It's very difficult to keep track when you're rotating which one was the last petal when you have so many petals. Now, of course, the roses have this programmed into their DNA. And as we rotate that, we even see other kind of cool patterns and stars. And even if you notice, most flowers are stars. When you look down on them, even trees, palm trees, and other plants, they really look like stars. And a lot of it has to do with the pattern in which they're growing and their programming. And the star as well as flowers, maybe because they look like stars, but the flower represents life in most cultures and in ancient times. So here is our rose. Kind of cool that it has so many different colors. Uh, but that's the basic idea of how the rose petal begins to first form the spiral and then it'll grow the petals out of the spiral. But the Fibonacci spiral is a pattern that is used in many things in nature and in the things we design. Because it has strength and balance and it allows each leaf to get a little bit of sunshine. And it allows it to have a sense of, oh, variability to grow, I guess. Because when something's growing in a spiral, there's a little bit of bounce to it even. So there's just a lot of balance, strength, and the ability to grow and be nurturing to the plant. So we'll probably do a rotation with very, very few. We don't want to do this many. Something under 20 so we can kind of see a cool pattern. Now one thing I was just doing for fun was just, you know, I made, I took a picture and I rotated it around. And that cool option to be able to move and rotate it, I had 20 pictures around and 20 circles. So what we end up with is a cool pattern. And you see stars and you see like a vortex and you can see all sorts of cool things. And when you make it bigger or smaller you can see other patterns. So it's something to play around with and even to make some artwork. You can make a cool video. But um, this is how rotations work. So this is a very awesome free tool that GeoGebra has to be able to both demonstrate but also to play around and make some artwork. So have some fun 